All right, T, time to film a video. <laughs> Hello, you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a unedited, which I just realized I fully did that boob shot, and my kitchen is a mess. I did not prepare for this video, okay? Let me get a hair clip. Well, then if I get that, I'm gonna have to edit out. Okay, so my hair's just gonna look like this. We are gonna talk all about the boobs today, final boob video. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, all the noise on my phone. <sighs> um, last, last video talking about my boobs. I feel like I've done a few. I'll link them all down below. But I got them done January 4th. Today is April 18th, so it's been some time. I've fully healed. I mean, they say it take up, can take up to a year, but I feel like most of the major healing that I've had to do has happened. Um, so... Yeah, I want to answer all of your guys' questions about it and all of that. So, first question, are they comfortable? Yes, um, I didn't know if I would feel like more heavy chested, my back would hurt, like all the things, right? And a lot of that comes with time, I think, when you're bigger chested, but I have not experienced any discomfort other than right after surgery. Obviously, I'm not gonna be the most comfortable I've ever been, but I, if anything, feel more comfortable because I feel comfortable in my body. So physical discomfort, absolutely not. Um, I don't still have pain either. The worst part of the healing process. I would say the worst part is just, this isn't painful, but being taped, because after you have surgery, you're taped up for so long, like six weeks. At least I was, I, don't, I know it's different for every doctor, every method, um, if you have a lift, like if you just have implants, it's very different for everybody. Which also, disclaimer, this is just based off my experience. Every doctor, every everything, everybody is different. So keep that in mind. But um, being taped up was really hard for me because one, I was so eager just for the results. And then also it was just like really hard to find things to wear being completely taped up. I will say it was winter time, so that was nice. I can't imagine being in the summer and wearing tank tops and stuff, being taped up, that would have been so ugly. So word of advice, get them done in the winter time. Um, have you felt sick? No, I have not felt sick. I do want to say something about breast implant. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I know a lot of you guys will know what I'm talking about. Um, I've addressed this pretty much on every video that I've made about boobs, but it was something I was really worried about and really scared about. And, um, you know, everybody has their own experience and not to say people haven't gotten sick from um, getting their boobs done, but people also get sick from like eating strawberries or peanut butter. So everybody's body is different. A lot of things are made to be more dramatic than they are. And once you really actually do your research, um, you find out a lot of those fears aren't necessarily something you should be fearful of. And there's not a lot of solid evidence. Now, if you have a friend named Becky who had a breast implant, whatever, like I get it. I'm not saying people don't get sick from it. People have allergic reactions to things and you're putting something foreign in your body. Not every time is that gonna go great. That's just like obvious. Um, but that was something that I was really scared of and as time has gone on, I have become basically oblivious to it. Some will say ignorant, but I just am not worried about it. Do you have any regrets with choice of size? So I am a 32 double D, double D or um, a 32 triple D, depending on the brand, because every brand is different. You guys know, like, before I got surgery, I literally, you guys, <laughs> I had A's, and I went to Victoria's Secret, and they told me I was a double D. So, like, it depends where you shop, but most of the time, I'm a 32 double D, um, and then some brands, I'm a triple d it's kind of hard to tell in what i'm wearing but as you can see like i feel i'm not wearing a bra right now um but they are pretty proportionate to my body and i like them i feel like they they're they're very appropriate if they're showing it's not too much but at the same time i can make them like bigger or more exciting and i'm sure a lot of you when you hear a 32 double or triple d you're like you don't look like that again everybody's body is different and that's why it's important that you try on your own implants which usually you do at the first appointment and decide what size will look best on your body because it truthfully is about your body and all of that but to answer your question Oh my gosh, I need to talk slower. Um, I do wish I went bigger. <laughs> now, I go back and forth because I wish I went bigger because one, I paid so much money for them, which I talk about pricing in other videos. Um, I paid so much for them and just, of course, I got surgery. I want them like big and ex crazy extravagant. But I also know if I got them bigger, I would have to get them smaller in the future because I wouldn't look very cute as a 40 year old with like giant 
massive boobs. Um, I don't think that's not my style. So I would probably have to redo them later on. So this is good for a long term, even though they do recommend you get them done anyways. But I do debate, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, Kira. I do debate going back and getting them bigger, but I don't know. I'm still, I'm still just like seeing how they go, but they definitely are better than A's and I do really like how big they are. I recommend if you're looking into getting your boobs done, always go bigger. Don't ever go smaller because I have yet to ever hear somebody say they wish they went smaller. Everybody always says they went bigger. And I remember when I tried them on and then I had to wait a year for my actual surgery I kept thinking to myself like maybe I should get smaller and thank god I didn't because I at that point if I went smaller than this I would have been a wreck how is the sensation um the same or different so that's a really good question I'm still have no sensation in my nipples and that definitely happens like some people don't ever get it back some people get it back a year later two years later some people get it back like a couple weeks later it's just different for everybody I am very much like a nipple person like a nipple play person so I really hope that I get my feeling back soon because I do I do hate not having sensation there plus it's just really weird to like feel my boobs uh, and not feel it I did also get implants, so a lot more of me was like cut up, and that can lead to not all of your sensation coming back, but so far, nothing. Mm. <laughs> coming from someone with big boobs, is it harder to breathe laying down? No, I mean, maybe mine just aren't that big, but I, again, the feeling for me, I haven't felt um, anything different. When and how is it possible to see them? You guys, oh my gosh, I put up a picture on Instagram for both my subscribers and for like just regular viewers and it got removed from Instagram. It was such a big deal. It's because everybody freaking reports me on there and now I got my subscriptions taken away for a certain amount of time, so that's really annoying. But basically, I tried to post, it got taken down. Um, so I'm figuring out another way to post. I'm debating OnlyFans. I know I always am debating OnlyFans, but it's truthfully just because it's different when people are paying for content like that. Like posting things here and there to my subscribers on Instagram that's like more sexual, it doesn't feel like people aren't paying to see me look like that. So I feel like they wouldn't be let down if I didn't post that. People on OnlyFans would pay to see my nudity and I don't think I would like, I don't know how often I could come up with that kind of content, you know? Is there much scarring? So I have scarring that goes like down. The scarring around my nipple has completely gone away and then there's like lines down my boob right here. The mailman just tried to open the door. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. It's locked, but okay, anyways. That was so weird. Um, I forget this isn't edited, so I've gotta just keep going. I do have scarring down, but it is very much like going away by the second. There's just right now like a lot of redness still, which I know that will take a while to go down. Um, did you do the new gummy bear implants or silicone, the gummy bear ones? I want to get a lift after four kids. Suggestions, do it. Go and at least have your first appointment and then make a decision after that because that's where you're gonna get all your answers or your questions answered and really get a feel for if it's something that you want to do or not. Um, but yeah, definitely a confidence booster. <laughs> oh my gosh do you think of all your recent inflammation and morning swelling bll starting that's a breast plant illness thing that i'm talking about you guys i feel like people are so quick to just like jump to things like not even just to me but like yourself personally people get a cough and they're like i'm dying like i feel like we live in a generation where everything's taken so dramatically and it's like my face is swelling because I'm eating like a pig. Like I'm eating a bag of sunflower seeds before I go to bed at night and not drinking any water. It's because I'm getting fat. It's not because I have like breast implant illness, you know? I don't know. Not. I don't think this person meant harm by this question, but it does make me laugh that like people just need to like 
simmer down, you know? I think a lot of anxiety issues would go away if people would just like not be so dramatic. That's gonna come off wrong. Not like real anxiety, okay, don't start going crazy. I have anxiety, I get it. But like a lot of the crazy stuff would go away if everybody, myself included, we all just need to relax. Um, are you happy with them? I am overall very happy with them. Like again, the only concern is I wish I would have went a little bit bigger but they jiggle, they bounce, like they fall to the sides when I lay down. Like they are, they are definitely what I wanted as far as like the naturalness. And even though I got a lift, they're not like in my face. Like they still have this like kind of natural sag to them, which I really like. They have the teardrop shape. That's something that I made very important and very clear to my doctors. Like I want the teardrop. Oh my gosh, I just remembered. I ordered the Betty's I hear something weird. I ordered the Betty's bedding for my kids. Finally, I've been thinking about it for years, but it's so expensive. But I finally bought it because there was a sale of buy one, get one 50% off. So that's what was delivered. Um, is there anything you regret? Again, just the size. How long was the initial recovery? So for about a week, I was out of commission, like couldn't do anything. And then um, it was about like six weeks until I could lift anything or um, go in like submerged in water and that was also really hard like uh, that first couple weeks of not showering and just doing like cloth baths where you like use a wet rag oh i hated that and you guys know i'm not somebody who like washes my hair every day anyways but that was hard so yeah about six weeks i still actually can't do any workouts not that i work out at all but if i were to work out he tells me like don't lift things above here or that's gonna like engage this area but otherwise i'm cleared to work out um <laughs> my boyfriend manhandles the out of my boobs and i'm scared it would pop is that a thing girl same I am, again, I'm all about that kind of stuff. And no, they, first of all, the kind of implants that I got, like the gummy bear kind is what they call them. They can't even pop. It's literally impossible. If you cut one of those implants open and put it in two, they would just be like two separate pieces. Nothing, it's not like a liquid inside where it would like leak or like, it's not the way you envision it. So that's not even possible, but I get the fear. Um, I definitely would say, but even now, like I'm still very careful. Like I'm a stomach sleeper and I get so nervous that I put too much pressure on my chest. Like I still worry about those things. So even when he, when boyfriend grabs them, I'm like, careful now, careful, but they won't pop. <laughs> um, have you found that you can wear different tops and things that you used to? Yes. So the dress. The dressing part is interesting because my like certain tank tops and stuff that I would wear before, if I wear them now, they look a little bit like sluttier, if you will, because it looks like I'm intentionally trying to show, show more boobs. And I'm truthfully not, even though I do love showing them because they're new and it's exciting. Um, when I take the kids to the park, I'm not trying to really show everything I have, but sometimes it just like, there are certain shirts that there's no way to avoid it. I did have to get rid of like a lot of lingerie and swimsuits and things like that because it just didn't fit. So yeah, I'm still learning what to wear and stuff. Uh, one thing that I've learned that maybe might be helpful for you guys is at least when you have your boobs done, I don't know about if you don't have your boobs done, but when you pay for a lift and get implants, it's actually super important that you wear a bra all the time. It's funny because a lot of people say like, I wanna get my boobs done so I don't have to wear a bra. And I get that because now they're like, round and happy boobs so like you want them you don't feel like you have to wear a bra but actually if you want your boobs to stay the same you need to wear a bra because it holds them up and when you get bigger boobs it's heavy and so your boobs are gonna like be heavier and if you don't wear a bra to support that it's not gonna be good for your implants your boobs or you so that was also a really big adjustment like you guys i, don't, I think i said it in the beginning of this video that i'm not wearing a bra right now um it's like once a week I'll not wear a bra for like a couple hours, but after that I wear bras all the time because again, it was really expensive for me.
Alright you guys, today we are working with Circle DNA. If you haven't yet heard of Circle DNA, they are an at home DNA kit. They are the top one around the world. They have the most efficient and correct results, 99.9% .9 accuracy, and the things that they tell you are so fun. So I actually worked with them over a year ago, or exactly a year ago, and it was awesome. So I thought it'd be fun to do it with the kids and get their results and be able to kind of compare. And we also have Oscar's results, so it'll be fun to see like your parents versus you. So this is what the packaging looks like. So sleek, love it so much. I already have one open just so that I could show you guys really easily. Again, I already did mine a year ago, but I figured I'd do it again just to see if there was anything new. So it's really easy to do. In the box, you open it, and then it'll give you a QR code to scan and register this. Everything that you do will be through the app, even your results. You'll ship this in, and then after 18 days, you'll get your results. Do you know it's healthy? It's apple and bananas. So after you activate your kit and you get all of the app set up, you're gonna open your box all the way and then inside it will also give you instructions on how to take the test. So it comes with this little thingy McBobber, this little Swabber McBobber, and then I think that's it. It's just like two things. Oh, and the bag to return your sample. So let's get started with this. Do you know what we're doing? It's gonna feel like you're at the doctor kind of, but you're not. You're just in the basement. Are you excited? Okay, scared. It just goes in your mouth. It's not scary at all, I promise. I guess I should have done it first so that she could see, but I already registered that this one in her name. So look, look at the picture. You're just opening your mouth, and then I'm gonna turn it around in your mouth 10 times, or the side of your cheek, sorry. It feels weird, right? And then break it. So it goes like this, like that. You break it. Yeah. Okay, shake it 10 times. Really hard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Seal it super tight. And then we put it back in the and box. The princess behind me. Yep. Hi, princess. And then on the app, it gives you instruction on how to ship this back, which is also super easy. Also, she's my mommy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Open this, put it in there. Okay, got these two. Now let's go do the other kids. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Okay, got the girls test and Oscar's gonna do Levi's when he gets home from school and then we'll find out in 18 days. Okay, you guys, I finally got my DNA test results back. This time it was way quicker to get my results back. So I'm so excited. I kind of took a sneak peek, but I didn't look at all of it. So let's do it together. I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to see mine, but something about like seeing my kids stuff is so interesting to me. So, so when you go to Levi's and then you go to his DNA and then if I go to his ancestry, that's what I feel like a lot of people do DNA tests for, although Circle DNA provides so many additional details, which is really fun to look at. This is like a really interesting part. So Levi is 73% European, right? Okay, she is 82% European. Now keep in mind, all my kids have the same dad. So it's crazy that there's such a difference. And then if you go to Avery's, hers is 87, and then Aura's is 92% European. I just think it's so interesting that like all my kids came from the same place, the same womb, the same dad. Their ancestry information is different. So I thought that was really crazy. So as you can see, they have so many different things. Diet, nutrition, stress and sleep, well-being, skin, pollution, um, personality traits, cancer risk, family pan planning, drug responses. So another interesting one that I did peek out that I wanted to share with you guys, this was really interesting and stuck out to me a lot, obviously because this is a health thing and I know that this app, it definitely wants to like put a disclaimer that it's not saying that you have these things or whatever. It just kind of tells you what you may be a carrier or at risk of so then you can like go to the doctor and maybe get tested or whatever. So I thought this was really interesting this showed up on all the girls, not Levi's, but on all the girls. So then when I got my results back, I was interested to see if I carried it and I, I've never even heard of this. Um, it's, I guess, like a mutation 
and it's pretty serious like when I was reading about it that's what's also nice about this app not only does it tell you if you're at risk for it but then it also gives you information on it um, just like the impact level what it is how it's treated and then we'll switch to Alea's because Alea I've talked with this so many times on this channel she doesn't sleep like ever she has severe insomnia she goes to bed super late I mean I put her to bed at 7 30 but she'll just lay there until like midnight so I'm super interested to see her sleep she's a deep sleeper she has average risk for sleep apnea sleep apnea does run in my family but her sleep duration that she needs is short which doesn't surprise me at all <laughs> okay another really fun one was success traits that i just think it's so cool that they have all of these things so intelligence um your genetic result is normal this is levi's he has excellent emotional intelligence he is an excellent entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship tendencies is excellent. They definitely have seemed to also add a lot since I've last done my report. They have over 500 reports, you guys. And now with the diet and nutrition section, I will be able to implement Circle into my daily routine. But if you guys do decide to do this, they actually do one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you go through this information, it's obviously a lot of really awesome information, but if you have questions or you want to dig deeper or understand more, they do also offer free one-on-one -on -one consultations with somebody to help understand. I will have all the information in the description box for you guys to have access to your DNA tests. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out on Instagram. I'd love to be able to answer. This is so fun and I'm very passionate about this. It's become such an exciting thing to do. Like, especially, I want to do one for the pets. I want to do one for everybody I know. I just feel like it's so fun. So anyways, thanks so much to Circle DNA for sponsoring today's video. It's so funny to me that like little kids that come to play with Levi will just walk in our house. He was very disappointed Levi wasn't here. I thought it was Levi. Anyways, um, yeah, so I have to wear a bra all the time. Now, I do wear different bras. Like, I have to wear under underwire bras all the time, even, like, underwire swimsuits. Or if I wear laundry, I'm not supposed to be in it for, like, longer than 25 minutes unless it's, like, supportive as well. So, um, I wear, like, underwire sports bras at night because those are just more comfortable. And then I wear the, like, supportive wire bras throughout the day. And those can get uncomfy, but you'd be surprised how much you actually get used to it. So... Yeah, and where I'm gonna put some bras on Instagram that I have been loving. It's taken me, you guys, I have bought so many bras since I got my boobs done and had to return them. Like, I can't even tell you how many I have had to return. So it's taken me a while. So I'll be linking those on Instagram because that's been a great thing to be able to find. I've actually had a lot of messages from you guys of like, okay, now that you have big boobs, like what bras are you wearing? Because people will struggle to find them. There's Especially there's not like cute ones. That's the problem. Um, okay, let's see. I'll do a couple more. <laughs> so many people want to know if they're heavier. Yeah, they're definitely not. Any, any can you, so again with the stomach sleeping, I'm not really supposed to, but I do. I do sleep on my stomach. It's not even something I can control, even when I've tried to lay on my back. I roll over and end up on my stomach. Will they change if you have more kids? Yes, most definitely, and I will likely have to get them redone. But when you get your boobs done at 26 anyways, you're probably gonna have to get them redone in your life regardless. Um, do you find yourself more out of breath? Can you still sleep on your tummy? So I answered the tummy question, but the out of breath thing is something that I didn't even think could happen but I'm starting to realize like over these past few weeks I've noticed I am more out of breath and at first I was like are you pregnant no I'm not pregnant um so I was like what in the world like why am I so out of breath and then I realized like well I guess now maybe because I have bigger boobs it's not like a claustrophobic out of breath like I don't want to scare people away where I'm constantly <laughs> like it's not that but it's just subtly I notice I'm out of breath easier if that makes sense so yes I do think that that has been a problem of mine and then also another thing, um, going into like weight, this isn't healthy. This isn't coming from a healthy point of view. I like don't want to just, you know, whatever, you know, all the things I don't need to explain like every little thing, but I have always struggled. Well, actually not always 
the past couple years, I have really strugg struggled with like my body image, my calorie intake, and my number on a scale. I've like obsessed over it. Um, and so when I got my boobs done, the number on the scale went up and that is something I'm still battling to this day because I wanna be the same number that I was before I got my boobs done, but I, I need to wrap my mind around the fact that, um, you know, I have implants and those, those are a number on the scale in itself. So when I add those to my body, I'm gonna weigh more. And so it, if you struggle with body image, that has been an unexpected problem of mine. Um, I'm really struggling to get to the weight I want with the boobs that I have. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I just, in my head, it's like, well, they can't weigh that much, but they do weigh quite a bit. And so I don't know. I just, that's something I battle. And then also on top of that, after you have surgery, you're recommended to eat like, I think it's like 2000 calories a day. I am like a 1000 calorie a day. Again, I know not healthy. Talk to your own doctor, do your own health, but I'm a 1,000 day calorie kind of girl. So <laughs> having to eat 2,000 calories for the first couple of weeks was really hard, but I wanted to do it because I wanted the results. I wanted my scars to heal up. I wanted all of the proper nutrients so that my boobs would end up the way that I wanted them. But like in order to do that, I had to eat a lot. And that I'm, thank I'm thankful that part is over because, oh, plus I didn't want to eat. I had like really bad food aversions, but Okay, so overall, I'm getting a lot of kind of the same questions now, so hopefully I answered yours, um, but I'm very happy. I'm so glad that I did them. I got them done with Dr. Ashby in Layton, so if you're familiar with Utah area, um, he does like an inpatient surgery. Their whole team was so welcoming and awesome and gave me all the information, answered all my questions and concerns, and it really just, all of this has been so much less scary than I expected. Truthfully, the only scary part was how much it costed. So um, he does have a really long wait time, but I'm so glad that I waited and I would highly recommend that you do too because it actually gives you time to really figure out what you do and don't want. And so, yeah, it was the only thing I would say, go bigger, plan for at least a week without moving at all and do it in the winter time. Um, but otherwise, I'm really, really happy with them. And yeah, I just wanted to give you guys kind of like a final update because I know that I kept saying I would. I will show some pictures if I have any um, after this so that you guys can get a better idea. I'm kind of not wearing the most ideal outfit, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.